guys, welcome to our channel Anything Medicine. So, today we are starting Barvo virus. Actually, it's the last DNA virus that we are discussing. So, uh, Barvo virus is the smallest virus among DNA virus. This first important information that we should know about it. And the second, which is more and more important, and I'm highlighting it because look, I saw it. It's, it's been asked in many exams and targeted by many exams. So this is the only single-stranded DNA virus among the DNA. So the only virus that own single strand, not double strand, single strand like this. So if we draw the virus, it will be like this, ecosahedral, ecosahedral, with one single strand DNA without uh, enveloped because it's, it's from the non-enveloped group and it's actually transmitted by the respiratory uh, way and it loves to infect the highly replicative cells like bone marrow cells highly replicative cells you can conclude that it's bone marrow cells so if you know this information you can conclude that it caused something in bone marrow what it caused it causes aplastic anemia mainly. So it's associated with aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia. And maybe the number of the virus or the serotype of the virus is B19. So this is the important virus that you're gonna see in the high yield exams that is associated with all these. Uh, syndromes that we are going to discuss. So, and plus, only highly not, not only highly replicative cell in bone marrow, but also in endothelium. So, in endothelium, if, if this is a cross section of capillaries, and these are, uh, for example, two endothelial cells, there will be highly replicative cells, and the virus will tend to replicate there inside and cause the, patho the pathogenesis inside or the cytolysis inside in these cells and due to that there will be what will be hemor hemorrhagic rashes hemorrhagic rashes so these are brief idea about uh, the pathogens of the virus so now let's see the syndromes which are or the forms of disease that associated with this virus. So forms of disease can be fetal and in sickle cell patient there are separated isolated form in the of disease and in adult and in children. So fetal form it's actually occur when the mother infected during the pregnancy and mainly due during the second or third trimester of the pregnancy because if it's first trimester there will be spontaneous abortion so during the second trimester or third the mother will be infected and the fetus will be delivered with non-immune high drops fetalis due to heart congestion of the fetus so the fetus will be born with uh, liberal effusion it's a trial liberal effusion pulmonary hypoplasia pulmonary hypoplasia and ascites so these are clinical triads for fetal form and of course the mother first of all will suffer from the adult feature of this form adult uh, form and then the baby will deliver with this form so it's combined pathology like first of all the mother will be infected the mother will suffer from arthritis as I, as I will say which is associated with adults then let the fetus will be, the fetus will be born with this uh, form next is in sickle cell patient actually sickle cell patient have uh, have association with different kind of uh, infections which are unique and specifically for this uh, disease like for example salmonella which causes osteomyelitis just in this in these patients uh, capsulated bacteria which cause 
meningitis and uh, pneumonia in, in this, in, only in these patients. And also, parvovirus love to infect these patients and cause aplastic crisis. What's the difference between aplastic anemia and aplastic crisis? So, aplastic crisis is just lowering in erythrocyte, erythrocytes plus reticulocyte. Retic reti reticulocyte. Okay, so you will see low erythrocytes plus low reticulocytes. And the normal range of reticulocytes is 0.5 to 1.5 percent. If it's less, so if it's, if it, if it's less than 0.5 plus erythrocytes also less, lower than normal, we can conclude, and only, and only these two, we can conclude aplastic crisis. But aplastic anemia, it's pancytopenia. All these cells, white cells, uh, thrombocytes, megakaryocytes, uh, erythrocytes, including reticulocytes, all will be decreased, suppressed. Then, children form. And it's the most common uh, form, actually, because mostly uh, children tend to acquire it during the school uh, outbreak and easily spread between the students because it's a respiratory way, as we say, and it causes erythema infectiosum, the fifth disease, or we call it slapped cheek syndrome. You will see the child uh, with cheeks like after the slapping, okay? And it will be uh, combined with uh, rashes overall the body, scattered rashes. Then the fourth form and last form, which is symmetric arthropathy. In this form, there will be um, arthritis mainly in knee joint and ankles and proximal joints of hand. And it's important to differentiate here between this form of, of, of this arthritis and form of reactive arthritis. There is reactive arth arthritis which cause after infection also. After enteric infection, which is, for example, Salmonella, Yersina, after Chlamydia also. So reactive arthritis, mainly we'll go, it, we'll, uh, we're gonna cross to it in a specific topic, which is arthropathy. But here, just we came across with varvo, varvo uh, arthropathy. So, reactive arthritis mainly asymmetric. Asymmetric. And it comes after enteric or urogenital diseases, infections. So, here is asymmetric, and bar form is symmetric. And it's, uh, it's important to pass over the six xanthimetous diseases. Uh, as uh, the infect erythema infectiosum is a component of this xanthimetous diseases, which is fifth component. So that's why we call it fifth disease. Actually, we passed over it in uh, herpes simplex virus because uh, it's actually the sixth component was, but here is the fifth component. So let's uh, briefly pass over it, which is so. First one is varicella zoster, the second is rubella, and the third is rubiola or measles, and fourth is scarlet fever, and the fifth is parvo, and sixth is rosula infantum, which is herpes 6. So these are the six xanthimetous diseases which we should know, and it's important for pediatrician mainly, because the child will come with a sore throat and xanthima. Xanthima mere rashes over the body, and we should differentiate between these six common uh, diseases. So that's why we are passing over it. Thank you.